What's up you guys? Editing Torrance here. Please excuse the get up honey. I'm getting ready for bed but I wanted to make sure before I post this video that I let you all know although I really did like this foundation the color in the very beginning for the intro and near the end for the outro may seem off. During those times of the video you'll notice my skin and just the general color of the video is a lot more warm toned and I did not notice that until after I started editing the footage so during the middle of the video is what my actual skin tone and my makeup looks like. It's just that you will notice a very warm tone look in the very beginning and the end. And that is not due to the makeup. It was something going on with my lighting and I just did not catch it in time. But I just wanted to let you all know that and I hope you all enjoyed this video. So now you all can get back to it. What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Torrance. And all this week, we are testing out different foundations. In my last video, which I'll leave linked right here above, I did a tutorial using a liquid foundation from Clinique. And with this one, I was trying to figure out how can I make that a little bit different. And Bare Minerals has figured that out for me by giving us an original liquid mineral foundation. If you're not familiar with mineral foundations, they usually come in a loose powder form. Sometimes you can get them in pressed powder form but many and most brands tend to go with the loose one because it's easier to build and mix other items with it. And I absolutely love the original loose foundation from Bare Minerals. So for the brand to come out and now say you can get that same beautiful effect in a liquid formulation, it was like, I got to get it. The day that it launched in Ulta, I ran to the store and grabbed it. I was able to cash in my points so I didn't have to pay anything for it but it still cost me because I could have used those points for other things. So in today's video, I want to do a first impression showing you exactly how I apply the product, how much coverage it offers, as well as the price and how many shades it comes in. So if you would like to know if this product is worth purchasing and adding to your collection, make sure you continue to watch. But before we get started, I would love if you hit that subscribe button. If you already have, I would like to say thank you. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into this first impressions. All right, you guys, it's time to jump into things. But before we do, I want to give you a little information on this product here. Today, we are playing with the Bare Minerals Original Mineral Liquid Foundation. This is the newest foundation from the brand. And I've just pulled up some information here. It appears that there are 30 different options. My shade is shade number 21, neutral tan. That is for tan, warm skin with a golden hue. This foundation retails for $35. And just looking at the reviews, it appears there are just over a thousand reviews with an average of 4.5 stars, which is always a good thing. I wanna read a little information about it. It says Bare Minerals Original Liquid Mineral Foundation, Bra Spectrum SPF 20, paraben free, vegan, cruelty-free, gluten-free, talc-free, SLS-free, synthetic fragrance-free, and tree nut-free. They might get a lot of people on board simply with those type of benefits. But let's see what they're talking about here. What it is, less ingredients, more results. A new original. This liquid foundation is inspired by our iconic and number one best-selling original loose mineral foundation, which is made with minimal ingredients, for coverage that improves the appearance of skin over time. The next generation clean vegan foundation is made with half the ingredients of other liquid foundations and without silicone, parabens, talc, or oil. It instantly minimizes the looks of pores, redness, and imperfections and has proven to improve the look of bare skin in as little as four weeks. That's a real strong claim there, sis. Skin Improving Coverage Our lightest air medium coverage foundation with a naturally luminous finish provides a no makeup look and feel. It wears all day without clogging pores, causing breakouts, or settling into lines while mineral-based SPF protects the damaging UVA UVB rays. Available in 30 shades that flatter every skin type and tone, from loose powder to liquid, every foundation type is unique. So always be sure to use our Shade Finder tool or book a virtual or in-person consultation to book your perfect match. And the first thing I can say is, ask someone who's loved their original Loose Mineral Foundation for many years. I believe that was the very first foundation I ever purchased. I know for sure Bare Minerals was the very first brand of cosmetics that I trusted as a whole. Before then, I would just go in and pick one item from this brand, one item there. 
but Bare Minerals was like that first brand that got me into makeup where I was buying foundations, brushes, mascaras, things like that. And it just feels nice to know that they've actually taken their cult classic, which is something that even before I got into makeup was their bestseller. And to this day, I believe that Loose Mineral Foundation is still their bestseller. So to come out with a liquid version of it is going to have a lot of us like, I don't know if you're going to be able to hit the standards that I've already set for Bare Minerals, but we're going to give it a try. The one thing I do appreciate is the fact that they let us know this is a medium coverage foundation. So I don't go in expecting a full coverage glam look. I know I'm someone who generally loves full coverage. And with that loose mineral foundation, I've come to find you can truly take that from light coverage to full coverage. So to say that this only goes to medium, like sis, I don't know if you good as my loose mineral foundation, but we are gonna give you a try. And as with all tutorials, I'll make sure I leave all tools and products used in the description bar below. I've already gone in and primed my face just to help speed up things. I currently have the Becker Evermat on the sides of the nose, which has given us the white cast simply because I have extremely oily skin. And all over the face, we're gonna be going in with the Maybelline Master Prime. And what I really like about this bottle, although it is plastic and I'm someone who prefers glass, it is a frosted bottle and you have all of your product on the inside where you take this and you twist it this way and the cap comes up and it does have a pump. On the website, it did say dispense two pumps for medium coverage. As someone who has really large features, I am quite sure I'm gonna need more than just two pumps of any foundation to cover my whole face. So what we're gonna do is take those first two pumps, put it on one side of the face and see exactly how far that product spreads and how much coverage we're gonna get. So I'm gonna try to be really careful here because I'm not sure exactly what the texture is like. And because I haven't used it before, you can see I had to go in. Actually, we'll just test this out and see what this one pump looks like because I'm surprised that much product came out. And I'm gonna blot and press it all over. And we're just gonna see how much coverage we get from this. Okay, okay. I'm honestly glad I didn't just go in with two straight pumps on that one area. Because I think it may have made it a little bit harder to blend it out. And I know with the original Loose Mineral Foundation, when you first go in, it's all about buffing and blending. I believe they have a method called Squirrel Tap Buff. And that method is what works best for me. And what I've noticed is once you've gotten to the coverage level you want with the original foundation, you can sit there and just continually swirl and buff that foundation in place and it will increase the amount of shine that it produces. Well, not shine, I would say glow because it gets more and more dewy as you buff it into place. And I find that to be very beautiful. And with this one here, as you can see, I want to make sure you see this is what it looks like with absolutely no foundation, just primer. And this is what it looks like on this cheek with one pump. To me, the color match is really nice. I would say this is, I would give it about a medium coverage. To me, it's offering a little more than what lightweight would get, but it's certainly not looking like full coverage at all. I can still see my skin underneath it, but truth be told, with Bare Minerals, that's exactly what they're all about. I don't think they've come out with any product where they say, you know, this can mask any and every single thing that they have. They are all about your skin coming through looking as natural as possible. So what I want to do is just go in with one more pump in that area and see how strong our medium coverage can get. And because I know this pump is gonna come out, I wanna to try to get that to spread a little bit further. And we're gonna just go in and see if this build and see if it'll give us a really strong medium coverage. You know, most people generally wouldn't go in and add two full layers of foundation in one area, but I really want to see how strong our coverage is gonna get. And that's from one who enjoys full coverage makeup, doing this ain't gonna hurt my feelings. And I can already tell you it is definitely building I want to see how it's going to reduce the brush 
I mean, reduce the brush strokes as I'm blending. Okay, and that's giving me a little bit more. And still, even though I can tell it's giving me a little more coverage, I think on camera it's coming off just a little more flawless than what it would in person. But the fact that I can still see all of my skin underneath this is exactly what I think most people would enjoy from this. And if you are someone who either A, does not have experience with loose powder foundation, I mean not loose powder, loose mineral foundation, or you just aren't comfortable with it, I think this may come off beautifully. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is continue to put on foundation all over the rest of the face. And because I want to get this going rather quickly, I'm gonna pump uh, one here, one here. Baby, the things we do on camera for y'all, and then I'm gonna just take and put one right here directly on the brush, and I can smear it a little bit, honey. And we're gonna use that to press it right here underneath the neck. Because most people can barely see down there, I can usually get away with just one pump in this area. But for the rest of the face right here, baby, I want those two pumps because this is where we have our fabric clock shadow. And we want to make sure that area gets covered. And I'm someone who always forgets to cover my eyelids because I'm used to wearing an eye primer and eyeshadow beforehand. But we ain't gonna forget, but we ain't gonna forget you today, sis. Oh, and you can tell it is early in the morning, honey, because my words are skipping. Sometimes you truly just be wanting to lay back down and go to sleep. Cause you be like, baby, do you know what you can do with that extra time? But then I be thinking about the fact that y'all ain't gonna get y'all content and we not gonna have that, sis. And now we just spread this across the forehead. I done accidentally hit my brows up. But you know what? We haven't done brows yet. So that's a good thing. And right now, I'm just going through I'm waiting on it to dry down just a little bit more so I can buff this into place. I know it looks like a lot of coverage now, but trust me, honey, we're going to pull it through in the end. And what I am liking so far is the fact that it is giving me time to actually blend this out. I know yesterday, not yesterday, I know previously in my last video, I tested out the Clinique foundation, and although I really did enjoy it, I felt as if that one made you go straight in and start blending immediately because you did not want to risk it drying down in place. But with this one here, sis, it's giving me a little time to go ahead, work it in, make sure I'm liking what I get. One thing I can tell you is they've already said this is the medium coverage, and I do believe that's about as far as you're going to get with this. It is buildable. It is blendable. And she's definitely glowy, because just with this on the face, honey, I'm feeling like I put on sunscreen and I know it has an SPF 20, so that's always a good thing to know that I'm gonna have protection when I step outside. But the one thing I gotta tell y'all for sure is you can see my brush strokes from applying this. Like I've been sitting here for a minute just truly trying to buff and blend those away. And since it don't look like she's going nowhere, So, so far, simply because this has a sunscreen, those brush strokes are not pretty. That's the one thing I do have to tell you. I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera, but after giving this time to completely dry down, I'm making weird faces just to see exactly where it's gonna settle and things like that. Let me grab me a mirror to double check that. So far, it doesn't appear to settle into lines, but there is no doubt about it that I can see the brush strokes all over my face. All right. 
each and every area of my face have brush strokes and when I try to go back over an area to try to clean those out it just leaves new ones they are smaller and I guess if you brush all of your foundation in a straight up and down fashion that may help reduce them but I am glad I am someone who goes in and does powder and other things to go on top of this to help reduce that but just going out just like this, no additional product, honey, you're going to be rather streaky. Yep. So what I'm going to do is cut away, finish off the face, and I'll be back to show you all exactly what I use and give you all my final thoughts. All right, you guys, I am back. I've almost completed the face. The only thing we have to do is spray and set everything. But I wanted to go ahead and tell you the things that I used off camera. First thing first. With this foundation, I completely forgot that, I don't know how, but this is a mineral foundation. Meaning when it says it has SPF 20, it truly contains SPF 20. And if you're someone who's used to wearing foundation that doesn't have sunscreen, when you first put it on, it goes on one color. Afterwards, it starts to slightly leave an ashy cast, and that's the active sunscreen in the product. So when I put my powder on, I was wondering why do I look so ashy and so gray? I could not figure it out in the beginning. Once I remembered it was sunscreen, I decided today I wanted to go ahead and use a bronzer. And unfortunately, NARS does not carry this bronzer anymore. This is in the color Casino, which they still carry the color Casino because I believe that is their cult classic color. They no longer have this particular formula. I believe this was the Sunwash Diffuse Bronzer and I absolutely love this and as you can see I've used up most of it and it hurts to know that once this is gone I'm not going to be able to get this particular formula again. I've debated on going online and purchasing it from a third party seller but considering the fact I wouldn't be able to know the authenticity of it and chances are what's left in here could easily take me another year simply because I don't wear bronzer daily. I'm just going to hold on to this, but I had to go in and add a bronzer because without it, there's just no doubt in my mind I would have a white cast today. And because I used a NARS blush in my last tutorial, I wanted to go ahead and just keep things going with that. Today I decided to use a NARS from the Man Ray collection. This is one of the most beautiful packaging collections that they've done for the brand. The name of this blush is Fetishized. If I didn't say that right, honey, we're not about to try it again. I'll make sure I'll leave it in the description bar. But I really like this blush because once again, it's a nice, I would say matte to satin formula, but it has these nice gold reflex in it. They're not quite as noticeable as my MQD color, but as you can see there, it gives me a nice little flush of color for today because I'm not wearing any eyeshadow. On the eyes, I'm still using up my Climax Mascara by NARS. This is a sample that I'm running out of. And honestly, I keep saying it like this mascara looks so much more prettier without eyeshadow. But as someone who's addicted to them, she's just not going to work for my collection. So I'm just going to continue to use this one until it's gone. And I'm just now noticing I never put on eyeliner. And considering the fact that everything is still cute and we already here on camera, we just going to skip it today. But I was going to go in with the brown one. I guess we have to save that for later. On the lips, because I wore a Juvia's Place lip liner before, I wanted to try a new color that I have but never tried. This is a pinky toned one and it's called Love Me. This is my first time wearing this one and because I'm wearing a cream gloss, I don't even think you can see it underneath it. But I just wanted to see exactly what the color looks like. And for me, it's a beautiful color, but I think this is something I'm either going to have to wear a clear gloss underneath or more than likely use this to fill in the lips, not necessarily outline them. And for gloss, even though I'm not a big fan of mauve colors, especially on the lips, on the eyes they're okay, I decided we're going to go ahead and give it a try simply because Fenty Beauty hasn't let me down with the Gloss Bomb formula. So I'm wearing the new Gloss Bomb Cream in the shade 01 Mauve Wives. And I must tell you, when I first put it on, I didn't like it. And if I get like really, really close and look at this color, it's not my favorite. But from normal conversation distance, as well as right here on my monitor, it looks really, really pretty. And I'm like, okay, maybe if we just give it a little more time, it'll, you know, come in, settle down and get me feeling it. But right now, 
It's just okay. It ain't my Fenty Glow and it ain't Honey Waffles, but it'll work today. And because I've been using the Natasha Denona highlighter for quite a while, I wanted to go back and pull out an old favorite. So I brought back my Fuego highlighter from Dose of Colors. This is with the Desi and Katie collab, and I absolutely love this highlighter. I'm still hurt that they're going to discontinue it, but I use it all the time. And the fact that I can already see that big dip in the middle has me wondering how much longer I'm going to be able to use this on a daily basis. But it gives an extremely nice glow, which is why I put it out for today. Now that you know everything that I've used off camera, I want to go ahead and set everything. And you already know the routine. Fix Plus to give us a glowy do. All nighter so things last all day. Cheap fan, expensive breeze, good times. Gonna give this a few more seconds to dry and I'll be back to give you all my final thoughts. And this is the final look. I wanna go ahead, give you all a full face view of things before I give you all my final thoughts. And honey, things look really pretty to me. I can't tell you what you're seeing on camera, but what I can tell you is this is a beautiful medium coverage foundation. It's extra glowy, even though it did appear to dry down. And the number one thing that I am truly happy about is the fact that after I've set everything and sprayed everything, those brush strokes are gone. Because for me, that was the number one issue I was seeing. I was not expecting full coverage because it told me it was going to be medium. So the fact that I can still see this acne scar here doesn't bother me. I didn't even try to go in and spot conceal it because it never offered the option to do so. Keep that from there. Another thing is the amount of glow that I have. Normally, I would just have a nice shine right here where I would have highlighter. But it seems like no matter which way I turn my face, I am seeing a nice glow. And I'm not going to lie to you. When I first said everything and I was baking, I was worried, honey. I was worried. First, because I kept seeing this white cast. I'm like, okay, Torrance, I know powder can make you look dry and ashy. But this is on a whole, whole nother level. Once I realized that was the mineral sunscreen that is built into the foundation, I'm like, okay, Torrance, go in with your bronzer. And I'm here to let you know, unless you go with your same undertone and go a few shades darker, I truly believe you are going to need a bronzer to use this foundation. This isn't something you're just going to be able to slap on and run out the door unless you don't care about that white cast. But in my opinion, if I have to deal with the effects of white cast, I might as well just wear, you know, sunscreen and be out the door and not worry about it. To have to worry about the upkeep of my foundation means I have a specific look that I'm going for. And when I'm worried about my skincare, the only thing I'm going for is beautiful skin, not beautiful makeup. So it's hard to say, what is this good for? Would I wear this on an everyday basis? No. The fact that I have to add that extra step of a bronzer when I am someone who does a detailed full tutorial look like my makeup steps are over the top. I am someone who likes a lot of makeup, a really glam makeup, but it would be wrong for me to lie and tell you that this does not look absolutely beautiful. The biggest issue I have with it though is because I have a five o'clock shadow, I can notice the texture of it right here around my goatee area. And I think most people wouldn't even notice that. But because I have great eyesight, it's something I can get really close and see. And that's something I normally wouldn't notice with other foundations. So using this on an everyday basis, no, I would not repurchase it. Would I recommend someone else get it? If you're someone who's already used to using sunscreen based foundations, yes. If not, no. But what I do really think this will be amazing for is a tinted sunscreen routine. I'm someone who absolutely loves doing those on days where I just want to be able to put my face on and run out the door. It's when I want just a little more than sunscreen or if I plan on being outside for an extended amount of time, 
I don't want to be out there with just my makeup and no sun protection. So if you would like to see my original video on my DIY tinted sunscreen routine, I'll make sure I leave that link right here above. But what I think I'm going to do is update that routine because in that one, what I forgot to mention is that I use a normal clear bottle and keep it stored in an extremely dark area and I only pull it out when I want to use it. But if for some reason someone was to follow that routine and they were to just leave that foundation sitting out, they risk that sunscreen going bad because there is no protection from it. And I'm, I'm quite sure you can't see that here. Inside of this foundation bottle, there's actually a colored label that goes all the way around the product. And I can see it because there's a slight seal of where it folded over right here. And so that protects this product from daylight. So I want to be able to take and mix this with my sunscreen to create a new product. Because in my last tutorial like that, I mixed an SPF 50 sunscreen with the foundation that I wasn't using any longer. And I truly believe mixing this one, which has sunscreen built into it and already has color to it, would be a lot more flattering. So I really think within the next few weeks, I'm gonna update that routine. And I'm also gonna put out my original Bare Minerals Loose Mineral Foundation routine because although this is pretty, she's not touching that original foundation for real. Mm -mm. No, she's pretty. It's nice to have her and she works so nice that I won't return her, but I wouldn't recommend her, honey. Unless you already like sunscreen foundations and you're just looking for other options, she's the way to go. Other than that, I would say pass on her. And I hope you all truly did enjoy today's tutorial. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And also leave me a comment down below if for any reason you've either A, tried this specific foundation, or B, tried any products from Bare Minerals. I know the brand may not be quite as popular as they used to be, but I'm telling you, they make absolutely amazing products. And I'm gonna try to hurry up and get that video recorded of my original loose powder foundation. I have a routine from them where I believe every single product that I use from them is loose powder, except for the primer, because of course those are usually liquid, and the brow pencil. They used to have a brow product that was in loose powder form, but I cannot seem to find mine. And if I can't figure out exactly who I let brow it, I may have to just go ahead and use their new brow pencil. But at least 90% of those products will be loose mineral products. And I'm telling you, the routine is absolutely beautiful. So I can't wait for you all to see that. And although this look today is rather nice and pretty, it just does not compare to their original product. And sometimes it can feel bad to say negative things about brands that you love, but I have to make sure I keep things open and honest with you all because I wouldn't want to give a recommendation that isn't my honest opinion. And although Bare Minerals does make some amazing foundations, this just wouldn't be one of the top recommendations for me. I believe if you want to try a liquid foundation from the brand, I would just go ahead and go to their Bare Pro foundation. To me, it offers a little more coverage, but right now, she's good. She's just not great like what I was expecting. So I'm just gonna have to recommend that everyone pass on this one and just either get the Bare Pro or their original Loose Mineral Foundation. And once again, I hope you all truly did enjoy today's video. And make sure you all hit that subscribe button before you leave. But with nothing else, I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed, and until next time, goodbye YouTube.